Good morning. Uh, currently, there are more than 2.7 billion Aptic scholarships distributed each year. Uh, this includes medical, this includes the tutoring, and it also includes uh, world-class training opportunities. Uh, yet, some students are still forced to find creative ways to make income for their services. Uh, the creation of the NCAA was believed to be created by Walter Byers uh, for the sole purposes of calling a student athlete an amateur. This gets around paying workers' comp issues for students. Uh, today we have a panel of experts on this issue, and the purpose of this panel is to educate the student body at St. Edwards University. Uh, there's some rules for the panelists. The panelists will only have up to two minutes to speak for a question and cannot speak over each other. Um, I'd like to thank the audience today, students and faculty at St. Edwards University. My name is Marcos Xavier Estrada. I'm your moderator today and your student body president. And uh, for, as of right now, I would like us to meet the panel. Uh, first, we have Jesus Salazar. He is an avid UT sports fan. Next, we have John Gramlich. He is a current athlete at St. Edwards University. And, and next, we have Zach Rayola. He is a student at St. Edwards who's been studying this issue. And Andrew Liu is also an athlete at, student at St. Edwards University. Now, for this first question, I would like to ask uh, all the panelists the same question, starting with Jesus. Jesus, what is your position in this matter? Is scholarship enough compensation? Thank you, Marcos. I am Jesus Salazar, and I am a UT sports fan. So I say that scholarship is not enough compensation because scholarship is like can give it from anybody who receives it. So whether they are athletes or not, they students could like get scholarships no matter what. However, unfortunately, the scholarship does not help fill up the tuition and also their other expenses that to pay up for later on in years. And so I looked into the Boston Harvard website article and it explains about a Ohio State quarterback named Bradley Rory who is arguing that scholarship is not enough compensation because he feels that he, he and his team are working hard just as the employees in the athletics department and says that they should get an equal treatment just like them and so on. To explain more about like his condition, he also mentioned that where the extra money is coming from for the university because Ohio State is one of those big divisions, just like UT, who are so like into football and other big sports. And also I want to mention uh, how like it is true like if the university do have like a lot of money left over, they should like put that money towards their call it athletes compensation because I do support for the that student athletes should get paid overall. Thank you, Jesus, for that answer. Uh, again, Zach, I will ask you the same question. What is your position on the scholar on on the what is your position in the scholarship? Uh, what is your position in the scholarship enough compensation? Sorry, Zach. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this panel, Marcus. Uh, I'm Zachary Raiola. I'm firmly against paying student athletes. I believe that can serve as a deterrent to the education of the athletes, and I believe that has the ability to hurt the recruiting efforts of smaller universities. With that said, I feel like any athlete that receives a full scholarship is compensated enough. According to a Forbes article on typical compensation of a full scholarship, most athletes receive free tuition, free room and board, a meal plan, academic services such as tutoring and academic counseling, and on top of that they're already receiving free and professional coaching along with nutritional advice and the, the luxury of seeing athletic trainers and physical therapists throughout the year. With all expenses added up, the typical athlete would will receive anywhere from $50,000 to $120,000 per year based on the institution that they go to, whether it's public or private. From my perspective as a, as a non-athlete, I believe it's really unfair to the non-athletes that arguably demonstrate just as much academic talent as athletes demonstrate athletic talent. And although it may not be as blatant as the revenue that big time college sports generate, um, uh, Non-athlete students do a lot to help their respective schools generate revenue. Uh, 
However, at the end of the day, these non-athlete students, at the end of their college careers, will be paying off student loans for 10 years or more, while most student athletes will get off scot-free. That's why I believe that scholarship is enough compensation. Thank you, Zach, for that answer. Uh, next, John, I will ask you the same question. What is your position in this matter, and is scholarship enough compensation? Thank you, Marcus, and I want to thank you all for allowing me to speak on this panel today. I am in favor of student athletes getting paid, and I think in college sports, the times have changed and the revenue is so high right now that it is time for the student athletes to get paid for their hard work and effort. I understand there are many people that argue differently, but they believe that the student athletes can just wait until they turn pro if they're good enough to get paid for their professional playing ability. But um, I think it's time that these students get paid. For example, um, Ryan Swope, a wide receiver at Texas A&M, he played four years at the University of Texas A&M, and he was drafted in the third round of the NFL draft. But before he could play or make any money in the NFL, he suffered a concussion. It was his fourth concussion of his career. And doctors said that if he received any more concussions, that he could get brain dead permanently. So therefore, he was forced to retire at age 22, never making any money professionally. And he sacrificed his body for the, his university for four years. And I think this, goes with, this happens all across the country where Athletes sacrifice their body and don't get paid for it, and I think it is unfair. To answer your question about if a scholarship is enough compensation, I do not believe a scholarship is enough compensation. Um, at a Division I level, student athletes are required to stay on campus during the summer to work and to, not to work, sorry, um, to go to class and to work out with their team. Therefore, they don't have time to get a job to um, make extra money for their extra benefits or for their needs. Unlike other regular students, that have time to get a job to pay for their basic needs. Um, I don't think student athletes really need to get paid too much money. I just think a couple hundred dollars a month would really help them for their basic needs. According to a Sports Illustrated article by Michael Wilbon, the NCAA signed a $10.8 billion deal with CBS to, um, for the rights for the annual March Madness tournament. So it is obvious that the money is there, and I think it is time that the money finds its way down to the student athletes. Thank you, John, for that answer. Uh, Andrew, again, the same question. What is your position in this matter and is scholarship enough compensation? Uh, thank you, Marcus, for letting me talk on this panel. I'm Andrew. I'm a student athlete here at St. Edwards, and I am firmly against the idea of college athletes getting paid because I believe that college should be a place where a person should receive a quality education and not to gain income. And to talk on the matter of if scholarship is a compensation or not, uh, I believe that a scholarship, uh, student athletes receive a good amount of scholarship according to the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Uh, all student athletes receive costs for tuition, board, room, fees, and textbooks, pretty much the whole shebang, that's what Zach was saying. And uh, obviously different athletes receive different amounts of scholarship, but it's proven that most every student athlete receives more than an average student. And if universities started paying athletes, it would be very unfair to the students who are just trying to make ends meet in the, in the end. So uh, a, main student, a main student athlete's argument would be that they don't have enough time for a job, unlike a regular student. But in my experience, I have many friends who are regular students and who still work in jobs and still have uh, trouble with payment. They still eat, you know, ramen noodle cups and can't afford nice clothing. And they're just trying to, and they're actually struggling with just paying tuition or rent. So uh, that's why I believe student athletes, uh, with their scholarships, it's enough to be compensated for. And because college is a privilege after all. And uh, being broke is just kind of the experience of college. Thank you, Andrew, for that question. Uh, for the second round of questions, what we're going to do today is we're going to each give you a different question. Again, starting with the suits. Uh, how much revenue does a university receive from student athletes? Depending on which university that I'm you know, talking about, I am going to focus on UT and how much money, revenue they make each year. So I'll focus on like how they made how much last year in 2013. Because according to the USA Today, UT made a total revenue of about $166 million compared to 2008, 
total revenue, which they made about $120 million. So that's a lot of money that UT makes within a year from all throughout the sports department within the university itself. And knowing that the students, the athletes, are making 50% of that total revenue. So without them, the university will not be making as much money as they are today. But even though this is a small percentage, a student athlete should be benefited for their hard work and dedication because they help build up to make that total revenue each year. And whether the university is big or small, every like university who has an athletic department should have the student athletes be paid from the university because that 50 percent should be a good enough amount for all the athletes who play and participate in the competitive divisions because knowing that you're not focusing on football, but also basketball, soccer, and other like competitive sports division. And with that amount of 50 percentage, that could be easily split up towards the enough money for the benefits. Like John said, like, did I get an equal amount of pay? Like, not too much. So it helps them a lot. So, and so again, I am for students, athletes, that should get, should get paid within, from the universities within the athletics department. Thank you for that, Jesus. Um, next question is going to be for Zach. Zach, I want to ask you, would paying student athletes eliminate under the table payouts between student athletes and boosters of universities? Yes, I do believe that paying student athletes does have the potential to alleviate the problem of under the table pay. Because uh, essentially it would turn college sports into a free market. But I feel that because of that reason, smaller universities would be hurt in particular because they wouldn't be able to offer as good as, as, good as salaries as larger universities. And overall, I just, feel, I just feel like there's too many imperfections and variables when it comes to the actual distribution of money when we talk about paying college athletes. NCAA oversight would have to immensely be increased. And there's just far too many questions and answers. I mean, would you pay athletes if they get hurt? Um, what if a player's a bust and he just rides the bench? Do you still pay him? Would you pay players based on their performance? So uh, there's just too many imperfections with the model. But perhaps even more important, what, what happens to those non-revenue generating sports like golf, soccer, uh, women's basketball, baseball, softball? What happens to those programs at um, universities where their college programs lose money at, at the end of every year. <coughs> According to a reviewed sports journal, only a fraction of Division I football and basketball programs even turn a profit at the end of the year. The other Division I in football, the other Division I football and basketball programs, along with the non revenue generating sports, and nearly all Division II athletic programs not only lose money at the end of the year, but they drain their athletic budgets. So as you can see, if we offer additional income to student athletes that play football and basketball, all funding for non-revenue sports um, would, be, would be depleted. Sorry, I'm going to have to stop you right there. Uh, but thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, John, this question is for you next. Uh, do you believe it is illegal not paying student athletes? I do think it is illegal not to pay student athletes. And I realize that's a bold statement to say that will get um, decided by the courts later. But in March 2014, the National Regulation Labor Board ruled in favor of student athletes at Northwestern to be able to unionize and officially become employees of, this, of the university. This was a huge win for student athletes in the debate whether student athletes should get paid or not. Because now that they are viewed as employees of the university, they have rights to workers' compensation, which would legally allow them to get paid. Um, the, the union publicly stated that their main reasons for forming was to uh, ensure the health and safety of student athletes and to create a voice for student athletes all across the nation. They also want um, medical injuries to be paid for in the future. For example, if a player were to get injured on the field and 10 years later he's still having pain from like, his knee, they would want the university to cover that in that surgery. They also want educational funds to be set up for student athletes that don't graduate to have the opportunity to go back to school to graduate. And, but at the end of the day, they publicly stated that they want to get paid. 
And, um, but according to the Chicago Tribune, the Northwestern University still does not recognize these student athletes as employees of the school. And they said that they will eventually want to take the court case up to the Supreme Court. So the debate will go on. But once again, I'm John Gramley, and I'm for student athletes to get paid. Thank you, John, for that answer. Uh, the last question of the night is going to go to Andrew. Andrew, what is your definition of amateurism, and how does that fit into a student athlete? All right. Thanks, Marcus. I, I like how you brought up amateurism because uh, it is indeed an important aspect of college sports, and I do. It's actually one of the main reasons why I'm against uh, college athletes being paid. Um, by definition, I would define it as amateurism, the conviction of people playing sports just for a hobby, for the fun of it, and not for uh, receiving money. And this principle of mine is the main fundamental principle for the NCAA. Uh, in order to actually become a student athlete at Division One or two schools, uh, a student must uh, be approved as an amateur and agree with the terms, the amateurism requirements of the NCAA through the Eligibility Center, which is exactly what I did to be able to play here at St. Edwards. Um, and amateurism is also a huge part of college sports because if you think about it, without amateurism, uh, most sports wouldn't seem as special or unique specifically college basketball or uh, football, because when you watch college sports, you can tell that the players have more emotion, they have more pride, they're more genuine, have more sportsmanship. sportsmanship. And if we were to lose this concept of amateurism, uh, players would start to uh, not care as much, and the whole uh, integrity of college sports would be demolished. And that is, I'm Andrew Liu, and that's why I'm against paying college athletes. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you as well for taking time out of your schedule for coming here and educating us and letting us know your position about this issue. Um, just to conclude really quick a little bit about the statements. We know, Jesus, you're against this. But you think universities make a lot of money on student athletes, and you think some of that should be reimbursed back to them. I think one of the people you said uh, the university actually makes about $166 million in revenue a year. Uh, we know that's a lot. Uh, you believe students should get a piece of that. Uh, John, you're also for paying student athletes. Uh, you think it, it would be ethical, again, to pay the students for their services? Uh, you also mentioned some situations where players have had a lot of pain, uh, you know, when they're growing older, either their knees or their backs, and they, go, they actually don't make it into the NFL, don't make any income out of anything that they've done for the university or for any professional sports. So you would think that paying them would only be ethical considering the injuries, the injuries they might cause in the future. Uh, on the other hand, Zach, you're against it. And uh, you say because it might hurt smaller schools in recruiting and uh, just the overall of the sports, you know, if you pay an athlete, recruiting is going to be bad for, uh, for smaller schools. Uh, Andrew, you also say you're against it. One of your main purposes is saying education is a priority. Uh, you think that's what people should go for school for and they should agree to the rules of amateurism on the NCAA. Uh, so again, I'd like to thank the panelists. I'd like to thank our audience today for stopping by and hearing what we needed to say. At this point, I'm going to open up the floor for a few questions from our panelists. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, this question is for John. Uh, how, how much exactly do you think these student athletes should be paid? And should it, all, should it be all student athletes, or should it just be athletes at major universities? Thank you. John, the question was, how much do you think student athletes should be paid? And would it be applied to all athletes, or only major universities? I think student athletes should get paid just a couple hundred dollars a month, something basic like that so that they can fit their basic needs. And I think it should be all athletes at all universities. And like Zach said, in like smaller universities, they don't make money in all these revenue sports. But I think the major sports at the top make enough money so it can get down to the bottom, like I said, $10.8 billion just from the rights to one basketball tournament. So I think there is enough money to pay the student athletes. Thank you, John. I believe I have one question as well. Yes, ma'am. Questions for Zach. Do you believe paying student athletes would affect their grades? Okay, Zach. The question was, do you believe paying student athletes would affect grades? I believe any time that money is an incentive, it could become a really big distraction, especially to students who aren't necessarily fully matured yet. And like Andrew said, this is college is a place for education first. That's why student athletes are called student athletes. 
because their education should come first. But outside of um, that being a distraction from their education, I also believe that if students receive money, they could um, there could be other distractions. Like I'll use the NFL as a as an example for the domestic abuse. Um, once players get money, they don't really know what to do with it because they're not fully matured yet, so they tend to become irresponsible. So that's why, again, I believe that student athletes shouldn't be paid. Do we have any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, my question is for the panelists in favor of paying the uh, athletes. Where would the money come from? Is it going to come from like the tuitions from the students, or, or is there any panelists in particular? Or? Uh, whichever, whoever wants to. Thank you. Panelists for paying students. Where do you believe uh, this money should come from? Because since the university do make a lot of money overall, they have some leftover money that they come from from unknown that basically donations of that for each athletic department that they that families of the students do give donations to the athletics athletes because they know that they were working hard on and that to help to build up like put new like fun merchandise to help raise <coughs> tickets and also. That should come from like from the ticket sales and not from the tuition. Yeah, and just to add, I think it mostly comes from just TV revenue, like the ten point eight billion dollars. That's just for basketball. Football has huge amounts of revenue, just from TV. Thank you, Susan. Jeff, was there any other questions on the floor today? Uh, yes, sir. Question. Uh, what about uh, game revenue? Game uh, revenue, as in uh, uh, NCAA games that come out every year that use these. Uh, that you see students like this without costing them, should they get their uh, fair, fair share of that? Kind of stuff? Uh, for the panelists, uh, we know there's uh, video games out there, NCAA, that have students uh, portrayed. Do you think these students, these students should get a piece of that money made from those uh, games? I think they should, because they're like publicly putting that person out there. Like, yeah, they don't put their last name on the jersey, let's say an NCAA, Football, but their number is there and everyone knows exactly who that is and I think they should get a little piece of that, yeah. Side comment on that, uh, the NCAA game has been a game, at least for football, that has been going on for uh, over the last 20 or so years. This is actually the first year that that game was not uh, published or brought out because of ongoing lawsuit about paying players or having you know, players' rights in this issue. Um, as far as will there be any other questions today? Again, I would like to thank our audience and our panelists. I really do appreciate all your time and I hope you all have a wonderful day.